Hi, and welcome to Cosmic Crit. This is Rebecca, and I am here to introduce this episode. We're going to start by taking a little detour and listening to a clip from episode 16, and I promise this is going to pay off. Should we yes. name the monster? I feel like just calling it the monster is kind of bad. Uh, Greg. All right. Files. Yeah, Greg. That's man. Oh, Greg. That's precisely what I was going to say, man. Ugh. <laughs> Wavelength. I, I, de- <laughs> I, definitely, I definitely think that... Um, Greg probably was responsible for killing this guy. Hey, quick apology to I- any listeners named Greg, uh, but this monster's <laughs> name is definitely Pronking Greg. <laughs> what a what a what a piece right. of flame. Yeah, sorry what? about that, Greg. We definitely named it after you. <laughs> <laughs> Greg is actually the you winner of our. You are. Stop eating those Lay's potato chips. Wouldn't that be great if you were eating Lay's potato chips when you heard that? <laughs> That'd be the weirdest. <laughs> Greg is actually the winner uh, of our uh, hey. secret fan Friday challenge of getting a monster <laughs> named after you. Uh, oh, right, boy. Let, let's, let's go down this side passage and keep looking for Greg. So lo and behold, a few days later, we received an email from a listener, which I will read to you now. My name is Greg. Yes, Greg. And I have been listening to your podcast to get some sci-fi inspiration for an RPG I'm working on called Aphelion's Gate. I was sitting down to eat lunch at work, listening to episode 16, when the monster named Greg came up, and there was an apology to all the Gregs out there, and then a reference to Lay's potato chips, which I didn't get. Well, before me, and I kid you not, when that was said, was my water, peanut butter sandwich, baby carrots, and barbecue Lay's potato chips. Lays are my favorite chips, and I guess the favorite chips of all Greg's out there. So thank you very much for that email, Greg. You have no idea how hard I laughed when I read that. It was amazing. I mean, just amazing. You totally made our night. So a little bit of news. If you listen to our holiday episode, the Christmas special, um, where we all played Skittermanders and it was a homebrew episode. You really should check it out. It was hilarious. So at the beginning of that episode, Patrick decided that to encourage us all to try as hard as we could, that the winner of the episode, whoever Skittermander lasted the longest without dying, would win a free re-roll in our regular game. Well, the winner of that free re-roll is me because of my amazing Skittermander Pronky who lasted the longest. So go Rebecca. Feels a little weird to be congratulating myself. And if you did enjoy our holiday episode as much as I enjoyed it and the Skittermander generator that Patrick put together to create all of our little Skittermanders based on D20 rolls, well, we have created a generator just like that on our website. You can go to cosmiccrit.com. You can look in the sidebar and there's a Skittermander generator link. That will output the results based on four D20 rolls, very much like the Skittermanders that we had in the holiday episode. And right now they're just D20. So we just have 20 options for the first name, for the last name, for the color of the Skittermander, and for their quirk. But what we want to do this month with the fan challenge is to expand that generator to a D100. So we want 100 different first names and 100 different last names, 100 different colors and 100 different quirks. But we need your help for that. So we are now accepting suggestions for our Skittermander generator, and we have already gotten some amazing submissions. It's so funny um, what y'all are coming up with. So send those in. You can send them on Twitter or Facebook or email, however you want to reach us. We have details about that challenge on our website, again, at CosmicCrit.com. You could possibly win a Paizo prize. And now, sit back, relax, and enjoy episode 21, The The Fault Fault in Our Our Soul Starny. Last time on Cosmic Crit. Uh, Knack and Raimi argue with the brain. The crew meets Alindra's brother. Apparently, he's a total Glendak. We go to this floor, we go to that floor. We go to this floor, we go to that floor. We go to this floor, we go back to that floor. In this episode, our team of Stars Finder Society members becomes overqualified gophers. We convinced a racist to take but take it back. <laughs> 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 take it back. 
another nerdy professor goes missing. So the gang's off to do it again. Where in Castroville is Professor Solstarny? Episode commencing in 3, 2, 1. Episode initiated. The contrails fade, the drift dims. All that remains are memories. I remember a time of chaotic evil, ruined dreams, this beautiful land, but most of all, I remember the Drift Rider, the Ahsoki we called Knack. Greetings, road warriors and diesel pumpers. This is Cosmic Crit, and you're listening to episode 21. We are driving a big rig across the Scorch Australian landscape, trying to make it to the promised land. My name is Patrick, and I am the Game Master Blaster, joined by my five players and friends. I'm going to introduce right now to my left a small feral child with a lethal boomerang. Drew playing Nexus Rack. Master Blaster runs Bada Town. And to his left, the Ayatollah of Rock and Rolla himself, Lord Jabert, playing Andis 147. I'm Compers Foil. I'm an olive skittermander who hates Player <laughs> 3's character and owns a compass. Wrong game, wrong game. <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Hey! <laughs> Across the digital table, two humans enter, one Raimi leaves. Miles playing Raimi. Good evening. I remember no lines from this movie. And to his left, the true leader of Barter Town, Rebecca, playing Auntie Alindra Vallis. I only made it through half of this movie. <laughs> <laughs> and to my right, uh, last but not least, a leather-clad mohawk-wearing psycho looking for oil, Tyler, playing Adros Veronis. Look at me with your undivided attention! <laughs> How, are you, how are you guys doing? Welcome to another episode. <laughs> Yay! Woo! Woo, 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 woo. Are you, are you excited to play? Yeah. Oh, uh, well, let's uh, not mince words. Let's get to the action. What what happened last time? A lot happened in our last episode. Um, a lot of talking. <laughs> I was going to uh, say, did it, though? <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. Uh, talking, words, a lot of words happened. I know that we ended the episode with a gun pointed at us. Yes, and What's that's that. A- Immediately where we, we pick up, you guys are outside the disheveled and destroyed office of Dr. Solstarny and a plain clothes, uh, what looks like police officer stands at the end of the hall, a, a gun and a badge uh, pointed here in direction. And he, he calls out and says, Port Authority Detective Laszlo Laser, get your hands in the air, punks, or I fill you full of la- laser flame. <laughs> full of light. <laughs> I, full, I fill you full of light. Andis flashes their badge, their oh, Starfinder badge. You didn't throw this one away yet? <laughs> Not yet. I mean, I was I was thinking about it at the end of last episode, just flinging it out the window, but glad I kept it. Don't need that. Nack steps behind Edris to just completely block him from view. <laughs> I'm so glad. I'm so glad that our bard does these things. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, as as uh, you guys are confronting one another, pulling badges and what have you, Master Mahali runs down the steps and uh, says, Detective, please. She puts her arms up between you know you and him. The, these are Starfinders. They've come to investigate some ruins. Uh, and these are the ones that I, I told you about. He uh, kind of looks you over and... and holsters his pistol and says, sorry, I'm investigating a missing persons reacted quickly. Uh, what, what seems to be the problem here? Uh, you. Yeah, that's funny. We were looking for some missing persons. Uh, who are you looking for? At, at this point, uh, Master Mahali like looks into Solstarny's office and, and lets out a shriek. And uh, this detective comes over and says, is, is, is this Solstarny's office? Yeah, well, I, I think so. See how he made detective. <laughs> 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 there's a there's a missing person and there's a person not in this room. Yeah, and well, Master Ra- name on it. Uh, yeah. well, it. You've opened the door, so it's like not easily seen. Master Mahali, you know, confirms that. Uh, says I I I, I called the uh, the Port Authority after I, I noticed some irregularities in, in Doctor Solstarny's planned expedition, and when we couldn't contact her, I I feared the worst. Oh oh my, what has happened here? The the detective, Doctor uh, Detective Laszlo, says, uh, "You're all Starfinders. Uh, what are your names?" 
Alindra steps up as the Lishington of the party and introduces herself. I'm Alindra Vallis. And it's 147. Nods, shakes your hands, yeah. Hardcastle. Uh, Blip Hardcastle. <laughs> oh, Nack. It is pretty important. I should tell you this, Drew. Uh, this detective, definitely the cop that almost busted you the last time you were here on Catraville <laughs> yeah. uh, for stealing from the Antiquities Museum of Cabaret and is the one that arrested your teammates, your, your three teammates. Uh, Raimi just doesn't say anything and just stares blankly <laughs> at the detective. <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's kind of uh, Raimi's MO. Uh, MO, yeah. Then, <laughs> at this point. I'm Edris. Uh, he, he does like a double take. It's like, whoa, wait, wait a minute. Did you say your name was Edris, as in Edris Ferranis? Ah, yes, yes. You might have uh, seen some of the crazy footage of when we were on the Acreon. Yeah, no, I was, the I, I was just watching a vid of you fighting some, some space ghosts in my office. Whoa, that was crazy. Space ghosts, were they going coast to coast? But no, for for real. Uh, yes, the the you you mean the what well, you mean the void zombies or the uh, the that crazy ectoplasmic nightmare that we fought in the caverns? Oh, both were great. Both were great. Yeah, those were good fights. I wish we had another fight that good. I've missed them. Well, I when the the doctor called me here, I, I well I couldn't get uh, so starting at home and didn't have any way to track her comms. But uh, had a hunch, figured I'd uh, try her here at the office. He takes a look inside, and you all can see as well, inside the doctor's office, there are a number of stone and wood astronomy tools from various planets. It seemed as if Dr. Sostarni was an archaeologist that kind of specialized in those kind of tools, how ancient peoples viewed the heavens. The room is a wreck, though. There are papers flung across the floor, drawers pulled out from cabinets and, and laying emptied. Clay tablets have been smashed on a table, and, and parts of them litter the floor as well. And there is a half-packed bag on her desk. Detective Laszlo kind of steps away and, and starts talking into his comms unit, calling back to the station. And, and you guys can, can take a look in there, but then he, he steps back pretty quickly and says... Uh, I got uh, verification HQ vouchers for you all. Looks like uh, this was some kind of break-in, maybe foul play. I called it in, but uh, can I ask what's what's your business with Doctor Solstarni? Ah, uh, so we're uh, we're looking to go on a bit of an ex- expedition over to Yukalama Northern area. Oh and, boy, that's uh, wrong. Yeah, I know. I, <laughs> it's my first time here at Castroville, and I'm getting used to all these names. Like yeah. uh, right now, we're here in. Um, no, uh, Q Q Q Barrett, and it's, uh, it's yeah, Yukalama. It's kind of like like a camel that's also like a small guitar, yeah, but like a space camel. <laughs> um, <laughs> oh boy! So, uh, but we're we're researching some um, some Xeno archaeology, and supposedly she is very familiar with some research that was done. We was hoping that she could help us out on our expedition as well. Uh, right, right. He takes a look around the office and is like. Yes, foul, foul play indeed. If this was some sort of kidnapping, I have to say the first 48 hours are the most crucial in finding a missing person. And, well, I can use all the help I can get. Would you like to join me in, in looking for some clues here, looking into this investigation, trying to help me figure out what happened to the good doctor? Hmm. Absolutely. She's definitely going to be a key player in the success of our own mission. The the detective uh, looks all of you over and maybe gives Knack... And Raimi, like, a couple of hard looks before he says it, but it, he, he then says, uh, all right, then for the duration of the uh, emergency here, I'm deputizing you all in the name of the Cabaret Port Authority of Greater Castrovel until your duties are discharged. Let's dig in, see what we can find. Oh, all right. Fun. I'll start. I'll start with the refrigerator. <laughs> There's uh, no refrigerator. Tyler, I didn't say refrigerator. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'll start looking over any snacks that I may find. Make sure you do a sense motive. Uh, do the stone <laughs> tablets and things like that, do they look like they were tossed about or, or uh, knocked around as part of a struggle? Uh, why, why doesn't everyone give me a perception check? Oh, come on. My first two rolls of this game was a one and a two. All right, but we got some. we got some... Some good perception checks here. Some okay ones. I'm gonna. It, does anyone want to investigate anything in particular in the the office? Uh, there, there is a, a computer that is blinking on the the desk. It looks like there is a uh, this half pack bag next to a 
a suit of armor. Um, anybody anybody want to? Remy wants to check the computer. You got 13 miles. Is that, uh, is that yes. what I'm looking at? Yeah. So you, you go over, turn on the computer. It is a, a tier two PC, pretty high end, you know, for the university. And it is it is locked. Uh, it looks like there is uh, some countermeasures uh, and a timed lockout as well. If you don't, if you're not able to hack the code correctly. Can I roll a computer's check? Yeah, go right ahead. Awesome. 21. Uh, the DC to hack this computer was exactly 21. Nice. <laughs> nice. Uh, so the metallic uh, font uh, above Raimi just reads Hackerman. <laughs> Raimi Hackerman. You find, yeah, um, all, all of her personal information comes up. She's got like all these different apps that kind of like, you know, her schedule, her, her research notes, everything pops up all at once once the computer is unlocked. You find uh, the calendar, and there's a, a research trip scheduled in, in two months' time through the Eucalam, through through the southeastern tip of the, the continent. And uh, there's like a ton of like notes and emails and or messages and things like that attached to that. And you find uh, more recent notes saying that the trip would be be moved up to two days ago. There's like reasoning there. There's like some some weather and, and field condition notes that come with it. And uh, you see a, a note signed by Master Muhali. What does it say? Just okaying the, the oh, okay. just expedition know. being moved up and particularly for those reasons. So I, I relay that message to uh, the, the, the information that she was supposed to leave two days ago for everyone. Wouldn't Mohali hmm. have known about this before she sent us over here to talk to, to this person that they were supposed to leave two days ago? So she is outside. She's not entered the room here and is directing like, you know, uh, Akimzi, the um, one of the, the staff here in the building to kind of close down this floor. If you want to talk to her, you can go up there. I really just wanted to uh, speculate in front of our crew so we could all start to distrust this person before we talk to them. I think mission accomplished on that one. Idea. So, uh, Alindra, I mean, hearing this news makes the same connection as, as Nack, and, but she would like to just confront Muhali and, and ask her about the timing of, of these notes. Cool, cool. You go outside and, and, and chat her up, and what do you say? So, uh, Master Muhali, I'm, I'm a little confused about the timeline of, of the last few days. So, um, when exactly did Professor Solsarni, Sol, when, when exactly did she go missing? Well, I, I saw her... Like just a few days ago, I, I feel like down in the mess eating lunch. Exactly how many days ago? Maybe what? It's fourth day now. Maybe first day. Uh, so three days ago. Okay. Um. It, do you know anything about this this note that it, it looks like you signed a note um okaying an expedition that was supposed to leave two days ago? It, do you recall any information about that? Uh, she looks it over if you got it on your on the data pad there, mm -hmm. and looks really confused and says, "I." I, I don't recall ever writing that. That that's that's some kind of forgery. It must be. It's very strange. Um, it, very concerning. Do you have any idea if if there's any kind of motive that anyone might have for trying to get Solstarni to to leave? Yeah, I mean, she's just dumbfounded by by what you've shown her, and uh, is very confused. I I have I have no idea. She's she was all set to go in two months. That does not make any sense. Can I, so can just I sense case... a motive on, on what she's saying? I'm sorry. Yeah, go right ahead. Mm -hmm. uh, that was a, a 10. Mm. And, uh, but that kind of makes sense because you decided to stay in the room. I'm going <laughs> to throw that expertise die out there, too, just to see if that can sweeten anything. And yeah, that just makes it 13. Yeah, it seemed like a pretty genuine reaction. So they, they relay that information. Why don't you give me another computer's check, Miles? Sure. I w yeah, I wonder if you can like trace back that message. <laughs> to a source <clears throat> that note that was forged. Oh, good Possibly idea. Forged. Right. You don't see any computer trickery in, in that specific note, but you do find other notes when you're looking for things regarding the, the trip about 15 messages, e messages between uh, Dr. Solstarni and a Dr. Erub Pequal. The, the thread is entitled regarding your Eucalam trip to Elven sites. And, uh, these messages contain details published about the these elven sites out in the, the continent of Euclid. The, there's some shared research on the locations, but towards the end, you see a few notes of Paqual entreating Solstarni to meet him at a bar called the Five Arches in order to appraise some artifacts that he had found. 
And the last message was a few days ago. Hmm. So we have a follow up. Mm. What was it, what, what was that? Paul 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 the computer now and it's 147 uh did you have something that you wanted to take a look at yeah i was curious about the contents of this bag as andis is looking around this room it seems like there may be a couple of possibilities either there was a scuffle when this person was abducted or Mm -hmm. uh this person left in a hurry and somebody afterwards broke into the room and was looking for something. And so I would like to look for a clue in the contents of the bag that would give me an indication of, is this like a hastily packed like bag for traveling that was left mm-hmm. here? Or is this some bag of materials that it was just kind of like pulled out of a drawer and was rooted through? So yeah, you're not able, I mean, if you're looking for those kind of, clues you don't really see anything that would point to one way or the other is there clothing in the bag that yeah there are some clothing there's some you know something things that you might take on a hike you know some like supplies for certain in the bag you don't see like i said anything that points uh to one way or the other what you're looking for but what you do find when you're searching through this bag is uh, like a, a small piece of paper uh, tucked behind one of these cabinets a small note and it is an invitation to a bar called the Five Arches in the Gateway District in Cabaret. Is it dated? It is not, but the the note reads, I, "I'd love to show you this Elven astrolabe." Hmm. Is that what the kids are saying? Hey, oh, we, we know when I wrote that uh, <laughs> that note, I was mm-hmm. like, someone's gonna make that joke. <laughs> <laughs> love to show um, you this. So, Elven like, go, go, going off of uh, both. Andis's and Jabert's thinking here. Is it possible for Edris to do a survival check to maybe kind of see if there was a scuffle or just, you know, someone packing hastily? Maybe just because, you know, maybe use that survival check to. Are you asking to do a survival check because you rolled a, a natural one on your perception check earlier? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's, uh, that's what I'm asking. Oh, ga- gamify this game. Why don't you uh, actually do g- give me a survival check? See, see what happens here. This is, this is where I roll another one. Yeah. Is this like your one skill? Is that why you really want to roll? Yeah. One? yeah. 18. Nice. Right. So you, I mean, Ed Ross is looking around this, you know, office it just looks like it's been knocked Head over heels looks like someone just you know went crazy and starts smashing up the place and you know you don't really get any clues except when you investigate the suit of armor it is a Lashunton temp weave uh, a, a field suit of armor that you know you've probably seen before it is fitted for a Kasothan a slender Kasothan it's half off the rack you know and unzipped and it looks like because one of the arms. It is turned inside out. It looks like someone was trying to put it on in a hurry. Now, that is something you do realize with your survival check. Was this person a Kazathan? That Dr. Solstarni is, yes. Interesting. What about uh, Nack? Do you, do you want to look anywhere in particular? Is there anything left in the room to search? Papers on the floor. Yeah, Nack, why don't you give me um, why don't you give me a culture check? Oh, do we have time? Because I could just take 20. <laughs> No, uh, if no. that's all you want to do, if you just want to like go over like every paper that's been knocked down, yeah, that's fine. Yeah, let's let's do that then. So, it, I mean, there's like tons of notes that you have like no idea, you know, what they're about, you know, specific drawings and 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 papers, research papers, things like that. But you do find five pieces of paper with red marking on them, like you know, someone's written notes in the margins and things, and you don't really know exactly what they're they're saying, but they they strike you as familiar, and you realize these are pieces of paper that you had seen just a few hours earlier in the collection of Halquim Zahn's notes. Oh. Uh, these are copies of uh, some of Halquim Zahn's notes on his expedition with some notes scribbled in the margin. It seems like Dr. Solcerny wrote in some notes. Uh, can we tell anything from the notes, uh, or, or are they all in in a coded language that we can't understand. 
No, they, they seem to be tips and tricks on navigating the the forest and, and how to find bearing for some of the locations. There, there's mention of, you know, this, this fabled pyramid city of a obelisk in the jungle. And, and, and there are notes about, you know, where exactly to, to find them. So they, they look like a little bit more information than you just had in the, the notes themselves. Okay, so I'd like to make a copy of all of those. Yeah, the, yeah, that's fine. Digital copy, just so we can refer to it while we're on our trip that we will hopefully be making. I think we also took digital copies of everything that the university had of Hawkwing Zone's notes. Uh, yes, yes. Way loss, definitely forwarded a lot of those to you, including some notes written up by LBN's 21 to is, cool. is Waylos still here? He, you know, went on to some some other duties after he had set you up in the, the conference room, but after, you know, like 20 minutes or so, he, he comes back. He, you know, he books it across the campuses. He was on another campus and, and does show up to, along with some more police officers to kind of control the situation here. Rebecca, going back to you, while you're talking to Master Mahali in the halls, you notice a a few cameras, security cameras on this floor. None, none pointed directly at the doctor's door, but the the elevators, the stairs, that kind of thing. Oh, great! Who would have access to the footage there, Mahali? A Kimsey downstairs. Oh, great! Okay, great. We're friends with him. Okay, uh, Alindra uh, points to the security cameras and calls them to uh, not only her team's attention, but also to Master Muhali, who she's speaking to. Detective Laszlo comes up and says, already requested. And as you guys are talking, Akimzi comes upstairs with a data pad in his hands. And it has, you know, queued up all the cameras on the floor. There's like four of them for the last uh, like four days and, and has them queued up. Uh, why Why does anybody that wants to take a look at this give me a computers or perception check? It's a 27 on computers. 24, 24. on perception. Right. A whole bunch of high numbers. <laughs> the 20s. Uh, so whoever whoever's uh, taking a peek at these, you know, you, you have to go back a few days. But eventually, after reviewing it with uh, Detective Laszlo, uh, he says, yeah, let's take a look here. Uh, and he's like, pause it. A few days ago, you come across footage of what look like three Karasha Lashunton in workers' uniforms carrying large bags. And they walk past the lobby up the stairs and, and kind of just disappear after that. It, uh, the tapes say it was very late at night, and it didn't seem like anyone was at the, the front desk. And it's, as you're reviewing these tapes, you go ahead a little bit further and you look at this floor, and it's a really good job covering up but someone definitely digitally manipulated these tapes because you can tell that some footage is looped for about 30 minutes on the the second floor here Hmm. and submitted back into the computer's data banks do i know where you would need to access that where you would need to access that computer bank could you do that remotely or you could probably do it remotely yeah okay and mm-hmm. when is this footage from? Two nights ago. Okay, two nights yeah, Right before you got to the planet. So it seems like the this, this guy, this Poqual, requested Solstarni to meet him. And then while she was gone, these guys maybe show up, <clears throat> t- toss the place, take everything they want. They try to take the armor, but then they realize the armor is not made for Kasothans, right? And then they no, can't it is made. It is made for Kasothans. It's yeah. made for Demaya. Oh. oh, okay. Okay. Uh, and then they leave. The footage gets doctored, and the professor probably never makes it back from... That's what, we're, that's what we don't know, is we, we yeah. can't account for her going out or coming back. Right. So, so yeah, relative to, relative to seeing those, th- those three goons carrying the bags, when was the, when was the tape looped? At that same time. Basically, when they, they enter the building. Okay, so so we saw them entering the building, and now what we can tell is that somebody's covered up their actually being, or well, somebody's covered up the presence of someone on this floor at that time. Yes, Presum- yeah, presumably. Okay. Uh, th- this this is a long shot, but does does Nack happen to know of any groups on Castravel that would be capable of this kind of manipulation? Uh, oh, like uh, you know, like any organized hacker, crime, any, or any, any I mean, known hackers, or any any anybody that would employ three Lashintas and worker uniforms uh, that that would uh, 
trigger any memory of because he has done crimes <laughs> on this planet before. Anything that, that uh, might lead him, or is this a common enough thing that it's hard to pin down? Well, give me give me a quick culture check. Oh boy! Uh, so I'll, that, that's a that's a twenty four. Um, that's enough. <laughs> uh, you you don't really know of any specific groups here on, on the city as a, a hack job, you know, probably don't have to be a master hacker to just loop some security footage on a, a college campuses feed. But you do identify in the photo that the uniforms that they're wearing have a very specific emblem on, on one of the arms. Uh, you can barely see them, you know, in the footage, but for a minute, but they are wearing a gateway district, uh, port authority worker, uniforms which hmm. you saw when you came into the city people kind of loading storage or, or loading cargo to the the elf gates the ayudara in the city wait was the detective from the port authority as well correct he's okay. uh, port authority security okay is he wearing the same uniform nope he's a plain clothed officer hmm. but the 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 uniforms that they're wearing are kind of like dock worker i guess for you know oh i see uh, uh, nothing better, you know, just kind of like a, a jumper coveralls. Okay. Okay. So I'm confused about timeline again. So two days ago, mm-hmm. her mm-hmm. trip was supposed to have left, right? Well, it was originally scheduled for two months from now, but it was. Yes, moved but up. she received an email indicating that it would leave two days ago, right? Correct. Mm-hmm. With a signed note from Muhali, although we believe it's a forgery. That sounds like one attempt to get her out of her apartment or to go somewhere. Um, we also have two other notes that are urging urging her to go to the five arches again mm-hmm. to get her out. It sounds to me like, is it possible that she has been denying all of these pleas? I mean, it, maybe she was in the apartment. Do we know for sure that she was not there? I, I mean, Edris would speak up and say that, you know, from in his like he took her look around the the room and it didn't look like there was any kind of struggle. So if they came in and they took her, she they either took her, you know, like silently and they knocked her out, but uh, there wasn't, there's no sign of a struggle or anything like that. But, you know, to point out well, like someone tried, someone I mean, tried to get in the armor really quickly. Stuff so it, is smashed yeah. in the room. It, there, there's not yeah, no it, sign it, of a struggle. <laughs> yeah. Right. I mean, it, it, it's possible that she was in here and that she heard a commotion and she tried to put her armor on really quickly and then wasn't able to because someone did try to put that armor on. When, yeah. when you, throw that theory out there address Rebecca Alindra can can go back in the room after sorting stuff out in the hallway and uh, you see you know the the suit of armor the bag where Ramy is working on the the computer trying to uncover some clues and you you just zero in on the edge of the cabinet where the suit of armor was pulled from and and just right on the edge it, it looks dented and there's just a very small smear of blood Ooh, that's not good Okay. Mm. Something well, Edros missed with his four perception check. <laughs> uh, this, Surprise! This, this is going to sound well, like an odd question, but... Oh, I guess maybe not. Can we tell what kind of blood it is? Is it Well, I guess everybody that we would think is involved is well, some kind of... Why don't, you, day, so. why don't you do a uh, sense motive on the blood? <laughs> <laughs> Lick it! Sense motive is what we use to taste things, so... That's a joke. I'm just kidding. <laughs> it was a 26. It was a really, it was really good though. <laughs> uh, I guess. I guess. I, I. I. You know. I'm thinking like Star Trek Six. The Klingon blood was different than human blood, but uh. Yeah, maybe like a life science check or something. It would require a lab to figure it out. I mean, it's okay. kind of ruddy red. Could be hmm. any number of races. So I mean, um, yeah. It, yeah, maybe. Yeah, I wonder. So now I'm curious if she actually did go to the five arches. Or, yeah, yeah, I think, so, I think well, there are a couple of next. places she could be. I mean, there's the five arches, and I think it's probably worthwhile to investigate that and mm-hmm. see like what it is, if there's any possibility that she may have gone there at his urging, or I'm assuming it's a he. Or there's also the possibility that she fell for it and thought that the trip really was starting two days ago, and she could potentially have have attempted to do that. But I feel like she wouldn't. Uh, get, she would leave on the trip with a half packed bag, right? It seems like she might not have made it to the trip. This seems to me like this might have been the bag that she was packing to go on the trip. 
Um, she was interrupted. Yeah. Well, well, like my, maybe my, she was my... interrupted. I think that I think maybe our next move ought to be to go to the five arches to see if she ever made it there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Detective uh, Laszlo is already way ahead of you. He's called it in, and he's like, "Seems like maybe I want to follow up on this five arches club. See if anything shakes out. Uh, I'd like to send you all in undercover. See if you can find anything out. Uh, I'm a known operator in the Gateway District, so I'll be out in the car on comms. But what do you say?" That sounds wanna, good. Want to yeah. get to work, yeah. deputies? Yeah. Um, yeah. Is there a is there a photo of uh, what was it? Shirana? Soul, Soul Starney. Soul Starney. So is there a photo of her somewhere in the office that we can you know snap and pass around on our data pads just to yes. try to ref- refresh people's memories? Omeya Soul Starney, a uh, very tall, thin, uh, light blue skin, Kasothan woman who wears you know like fine silks, and there's. On the Cabaret University website, there's uh, a picture of her, and it looks very recent. I think Edris would turn to Laszlo and uh, ask him, is there, Laszlo, is there any way your uh, contacts can track down maybe the location of this uh, poke wall fellow that she was supposed to meet? Probably going to want to have a conversation with him as well. Uh, he, he says, you know, he's already put out feelers, but he's you know, found nothing. Nothing came back on registered persons on planet, things like that. Well, Ramy or Andis, why don't you give me a uh, Peter Shex? What you can find on the Infosphere. All right. You guys are so good at this game. <laughs> <laughs> These are rolls. 28, 26. Jeez Louise. So you find, yeah, if you do a Infosphere search on Arub Paqual, when we talk to John Compton after we play this game, I'm going to be like, What's with these names, yo? <laughs> yeah, what, what, whatever happened to Chris? <laughs> a, a Rub Paqual. So you, you search for him on the Infosphere, and you find a number of articles about Elven ruins published in like the last few years. And looking him over, uh, you know, seems he seems to be a, a pretty moderately well-established academic. But it looks like most of the articles are in these really poorly vetted journals and. They might cite him as secondary authors on a few things, very short papers. Mm. But uh, like why few, don't like a, few, a few like letters to the editor and stuff? Like. <laughs> yeah, you find a couple of holes in the persona, though, some dates that don't match up, maybe some dead ends where, you know, you're looking for a photo of this person and you find like a picture of a Lashunton man to mind Lashunton man, but you find, you know, it's like doctor there's spoof protocols behind it. And from everything that you two can tell, it seems like this a rub Paqual is some sort of ghost, you know, some kind of net fabrication. Another ghost. We fought so many of them. <laughs> <laughs> you only fought one. Calm, calm it down. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Hmm. Uh, that does not uh, bode well for uh, our poor professor. Right. So you guys ready to to put rubber to the road, get in the car, and go to the gateway district? Let's do it. Yeah. yeah. Let's, let's, yeah. Head to, let's head to the five arches. So, yeah, it's less than uh, golden like an, arches. an hour <laughs> after you stumbled into Dr. Solstarny's office. Your car pulls up to a small Quonset hut style building in the gateway district. A 3D holographic sign out front reads, Five arches and depicts a number of half circles forming gateways in a light show of yellow and blue. So in so in this reality, how bogus is a Quonset hut? Are we like is is this kind of like yeah this is this is a a reasonable building or are we it's, looking at this like it's like, just like where, a building where that's we ended up the shape of an arch. It's it's in theme with the the district. <laughs> Quonset hut is you know kind of like a. Yeah, it's a buried piece of like aluminum Barrel tubing on its side. <laughs> yeah, my house is okay. like is stone and, and wood buried building. If you want to be technical about it, yeah, I'm I'm just saying, is this is this like a sort of feet like prefab sort of situation? Like, what what is this neighborhood sort of like? Is it sure? Well, I, I can explain that the gateway it's a, district. It's a real building, is, right? <laughs> yes, the gateway okay. district is part of you know the ancient section of the city where there's a lot of very old architecture. And then there are some smaller buildings around the gates, the, the the elf gates in the city. And sometimes they, they even build buildings on top of the gates. 
A few of them are out in the open, though, and just behind a lot of uh, security fences and things like that. But yeah, this is you know pretty far away from from one of the uh, Ayudara, the gates, and it's just a, a small club, kind of like a hole in the wall. The the building might have been something else at one point, maybe it was a military barracks. Who knows? But it it's not really well decorated. A- as you enter, uh, Detective Laszlo says into your comms and your ears. Get in there, see what you can find. You need backup. We're about a minute away if you push the panic button. It's only 10 rounds. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All your combats last twice that long, right? So, inside the bar, you're met with a galactic theme as maps, star fields, adventuring gear, and replicas of ancient weapons and small scale spaceships uh, line the walls and it kind of hang from the ceiling. The booths and tables are all named after planets and moons in the Pact system. A long bar takes up the the back of of the the building here, and you can see an android tending to a few patrons there, while a single chef back in the kitchen uh, works over a silent stove. There are about a dozen or so patrons in the room, a few Lashuntans in in crisp silk finery, maybe a a single human eating an off-world delicacy, while on a video call, seems pretty, you know, relaxed. Not, not very busy for this time of day. Uh, so, what would, what would you guys like to do? Uh, Raimi's going to the bar. Yeah, Andis is going to follow him there and try to engage the bartender in some conversation. Uh, do we see anybody in this place that matches the dock uniform that we saw in the video? Nope. I'd like to investigate this closet right at the entrance. Oh no, <laughs> that's that's a bathroom. So. <laughs> Alindra leaves her coat in there. <laughs> very, very smelly. Okay, Alindra leaves. Right, so you guys go to the bar and uh, the android bartender, you know, kind of sidles up to you and says, what can I get you? Uh, yeah, can I get uh, two whiskeys? Neat. Interested in any food? No. Let me do a medicine check on the on the uh, cook in the back to see if it's like barf from you can't do that on television. Uh, it is, it, it's not even... The actor that played him, it is actually Barf himself. Yes, back okay. there. <laughs> okay. Pick, picking his nose, you know, hawking, <laughs> uh, somebody you know, throwing food around. Somebody, just a beer for me. Uh, just a beer for me. <laughs> somebody order an Ecatonian egg salad sandwich. See if that gets us anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> it worked one time. Uh, they go on to say the, the bartender, a specialist squab and fig sauce with Triaxian matched Jaipur roots. Don't want to miss it. I'll, I'll have that. I'll take that. That sounds delicious. I hope you guys are deducting these credits because I am going to be looking. Nope. That, that's two credits each for the drinks and the food. No, Alindra no. will have a, a glass of wine. Two credits. So you get some food on the way. A lot of you have beverages. I'm going to talk to the. Uh, I'm going to talk to the bartender and tell him that we're looking for a professor. We heard she she, she might have been. We heard she might you know come here occasionally and we were hoping to catch her. We are looking to find some information about this elven language. And I fla- you know, kind of flash the picture and I say, uh, is she around? Have you seen her recently? The bartender's eyes definitely glaze over. I was like, I don't know what, what are you, what are you talking about? Do you, do you, do you want something to eat or not? I mean, I no, I'm just making conversation. I'm asking you, have, have you seen, have, have you seen my friend, uh, Solarni here? No. So Starney. <laughs> oh, oh, did you say so Starney? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, I haven't seen them. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's all I had. And Andis walks out. <laughs> <laughs> As you turn to go, Andis, the, the bartender, does look down towards the end of the bar and says, Tuonis, you have your ear to the ground. Do you know anything about some, uh, what, what do you say? It was a professor? Yes. You see at the end of the bar, a short and clean cut Lashuntan wears a casual clothing decorated with a fine belt and a light scarf around his neck. How, how fancy would you say this person is? Not not very fancy, just, you know, pretty casual. Okay. Casual cut to his jib. The the belt and scarf combo, though. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to nudge Alindra because I was going to talk to the I was going to talk to the uh, Android because it has uh. Cra- uh, excuse me, because it has <laughs> crappy uh, uh, charisma, but I'm not ready to talk to a Okay, <laughs> That's a step up. Right. <laughs> Alindra walks uh, toward this Lishinta. Is it a Demaya or Karasha Lishinta? Demaya? Uh, it is, I think, a 
Maybe I didn't say. Pretty sure Karasha. Okay. Nax gonna get um, close enough to hear, but stay kind of under, not engaged. Lo- gotcha. Low key. Low key. Okay, so yeah, Lynch is going to approach this this person and hopefully diplomatically ask. Um, so, uh, do you know anything about this Professor Solstarni? Have you ever seen her in the bar? Takes a, a look at the data pad, maybe if you show the picture, you kind of squints his eyes and it's like, hmm, doesn't doesn't really ring any bells for me. Well, we certainly believe that. Have you seen any any strange artifacts recently in the bar? I, I know that seems like a strange thing to bring to a bar, but uh, by any chance, artifacts? I don't don't know what you're you're getting at. What's uh what's this all about? We're we're just looking for a friend. She's big into archaeology, and we thought maybe that might ring a bell for you. <laughs> I don't know. Don't know too much about archaeology myself, but yeah, no, they're. All kinds of people that come through this bar. So what? What's what's your role in this bar? Are you the owner or just oh, a no. patron? Or he, he, he's sitting at the <laughs> he's sitting at the bar drinking. He's like, no, I just uh, I work here. You know, I, I, I get uh, some business every once in a while. There's a, a lot of people from outside the city, off planet, come through. What sort of business are you in? Uh, you know, imports, exports, that kind of thing. Oh, really? What <laughs> kinds of imports and exports? <laughs> Is this the coach head girl all over again? <laughs> yep. <laughs> yep. 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 <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, needs to stop going to bars. Yeah, so, so this this guy does imports and exports. Does he also work in construction? Because uh, that's a <laughs> what? Because like, they're that's always code for organized crime people. Is they work in oh. import export <laughs> or construction? No, no, no. It's uh, waste management <laughs> from the sprint. Mm. You know, he he looks you over. He's like, you do you uh, are you into shipping? Do you, do you have some something that needs to get somewhere on this planet? Because I can you know facilitate that kind of movement. Oh, yeah, we got He's some a We got some tablets we need to ship. Uh, gotta go. Oh, hello, hello there, Asoki. How's it going? Hey, how's it going? Sorry to uh, to, to intrude, but I just hear that you, uh, you 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 help facilitate the movement of things, presumably onto and off of this planet. And uh, maybe around some different parts of this planet. Got some some items. Let's just say they're a little warm, if you know what I mean. Now we got to get moved. Uh, looking for somebody to help us out with that. Oh, yeah. No, I th- think I can can help you out. Who sent you? Names are not important. And some people would like to remain anonymous, if you understand what I'm saying. His name was Blip Hardcastle. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to need a bluff check. Oh, come on. It's because I unchecked it. It's because I unchecked it. Two on the dice. Eleven result. Okay. He says, well, you know, maybe we can come to some sort of agreement, but uh, I'll have to vet you first. You understand that, right? It could take some time. How much time? Well, that depends. Are you moving people? Are you moving items? What What is it you're looking to do? Maybe a little of both. You know, we gotta. These things are a little hot, so we gotta get ourselves off planet. If you could facilitate that too, well, maybe we got something to talk about. I've got a small office just about a block from here. You come with me. We can start that paperwork right now. Get you started on your journey. How about that? How many? How how big's the office? Uh, I got a I got a decent sized crew. That's fine. They can come. Just right around the corner. Let's go right around the corner. He exited out a back door of the bar. Uh, you see a small alleyway out back. Andrews, you go first. I'm eating. <laughs> <laughs> I know you you're food. Tyler, your food just got there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm eating. If you want to talk to your shady friend about, I don't know, shipping human beings, I don't know what the heck you're going on. I'll follow up in a minute. We just said we might be going into a dark alley to talk to a shady person. You know what happens in dark alleys with shady people. You were just yeah, you get waterboarded. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I hear you're a master of dark alleys and shady people. You should be fine. Yeah, this really sounds like a you Take problem. You created this. <laughs> right, yeah. yeah. Andis is not, uh, does not understand what you're talking about <laughs> over there. Andis is studiously avoiding making eye contact with that side of the bar at this point. <laughs> Lindra is dumbfounded. Well, bye, Nack. Yeah, it's, it's, it's been fun, everybody, trying to move the game forward with the only NPC that will talk to us in this establishment. <sighs> I love it. Oh, uh, I'm sorry. Am I uh, 
Am I getting this right? Nack is, is going no. into the alley by <laughs> yeah. himself? Yes, Edris, that's correct. Edris would turn to Alindra and be like, you should probably follow him. I'll be there in a minute, I promise. Oh my gosh, I'm so scared. <laughs> Remus, I, I wouldn't. He made this bed, he can lie in it. <sighs> and this sighs and looks longingly at the second half of their beer and sheds okay. one single tear and then walks <laughs> walks behind him. Well, Andus, 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 I'll that. finish that. I'll finish uh, that, Andus. Oh, don't waste Andus. it. Don't waste it. <laughs> don't waste that one credit worth of beer. No problem, buddy. I've got you. Alendra shines her moat in front of her as much as she can. Yeah, it's, it's you know, only about midday, but you, the, these alleys are in the shadows of uh, a lot of taller buildings nearby. So just to, to clarify, it looks like Andus, Nack, and Alendra have gone in the alley. Uh, Remy and Andros, not not playing the game. Got it. It's, it's yeah. staying in the bar. <laughs> staying in the bar for the mess that Knack has made. <laughs> for some reason, that is a thing. <laughs> <sighs> AKA the AP. All right, so uh, you get out there. He only walks a short distance. Give me a perception check as as you as you walk. You three. That is a twenty-five for Knack. Twenty-five for Lindra. Uh, Lindra and Knack, you both see him. Uh, his hand darts down, kind of. Uh, Surreptitiously to his belt, and he depresses uh, like a, a small button there. Oh, good. I'm. Is is that? I mean, I mean, I don't see it, but is that just while he's walking? Yeah, as you guys are are exiting the bar, okay, you do see we, him do we very need... furtively uh, touch touch a button on his belt. Okay. Okay. Um... Oh, can I detect thoughts on him? Why don't you go ahead and do that? Yeah, I'll make a will save. Yeah, so he, he rolled pretty low. As you're you're peering into his mind, as you know, you're just trying to pick up the the surface thoughts as, as he's walking out. It definitely seems like he's sweating, kind of panicking a little bit. And it's not too far as you're walking down the alley. About you know a minute later, he turns around. He has a a small azimuth pistol just kind of against his side, and says, "Right, well." This is this is the ugly bit. I need to ask you some questions, and you're going to answer them, or you're going to be in trouble. Whoa, whoa, whoa! What are the questions? Sure thing. Who sent you? Who sent you? Hey, look, look, pal. We, we, you know, you, you. Surely you've heard, you've heard of the the Castroville University job. Uh, happened to happened a little while back, and well, let's just say I was a part of it, and I've got some stuff I need to get off planet. Nobody sent us. We just kind of heard through the grapevine that this is a place we could use to to move some stuff around. Yeah, why are you asking about this Solstarny character? Oh, ho, oh, oh, ho, Solstarny. Solstarny's the name on the tablets. It's the name on the information. You showed me a picture of the woman. How do you know her? Who do you think I stole the access keys to to get into the vaults, man? Why are you asking about her? Because I'm worried she might be following us. Looking around, trying to put the trying to put the fuzz on us to 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 get this stuff back. He looks you over and says, "I thought you were a better liar than that. <laughs> I've heard of that job. That was years ago. What uh, what's what's the game here? You you know about Soul Starney. What else do you know? Do you know about this Pequal? Yeah, we know all about it. <laughs> <laughs> Please keep the extra long pause in there." <laughs> <laughs> like that's exactly how the conversation goes. It says, <laughs> "So you know a poke wall, but let's yeah. say, we, but, but, but let's say we don't. What do you know? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you working for? Are you working for the the cops? We got them through the gate a couple of days ago. Now you come fishing for information." I haven't seen you around before, but that doesn't matter. He looks over his shoulder and down the alleyway about 60, 70 feet back. A number of figures turn the corner and you see yeah, three figures stepping towards you. It's like, like I said, can't leave any loose ends. I'm sorry I have to do this, but uh, you leave me no choice. As he's saying that, though, a massive bolt of plasma energy rips through his arm. The flesh burning and disintegrating off, and he falls to the ground, clutching a massive wound. It's time for initiative rolls. <sighs> Woohoo! Got all the initiative rolls here. It looks like the <laughs> number one person at the top of the initiative roll, Raimi in the bar <laughs> drinking. <laughs> 
Oh, so happy about that. Amy, why don't you go ahead and give me a perception check? All right. Doesn't see anything in the bar. Oh, such a shame. Such a shame. Yeah, you don't, don't hear anything this round. Andis, you are next in the initiative turn order. You see these figures at the other end of the the, the alley. They're they're looking they're some bad looking dudes. As the figures set forward, they, they look to be wearing leather dusters with blood smeared, tattered armored suits underneath, carrying long swords on their their hip and uh, giant looking looks like shotguns. The leader steps forward. It's a, a fat Lashunton with this wicked looking smoking pistol. And she calls out down at the end, says, kill them all. What you got, sir? Well, um, that seems like a pretty good indication that I'm not going to, uh, I'm not going to not shoot them. I'll put it that way. <laughs> um, can, you can might we... be shooting them. All right. I'm going to move into, is this low cover, high cover behind these barrels? Yeah, that'll be far okay. cover. Full. Okay, cool. Yeah. I mean, if you're um, behind the barrels in, in the, the alleyway, you can like, you know, just pop your head over and, and shoot. Up yeah. Yeah. Them. So I'm going to, I'm going to take cover behind the barrels and you uh, draw my laser rifle and take a shot. All right. That's a 19 on the attack. Already. Even shooting. Oh, no. You, you are unobstructed ever since you moved forward. That is a hit. Which one would you want to shoot the one closest? Yeah, I suppose so. Awesome. Yep. So your laser rifle, yeah, finds his shoulder and uh, he just kind of shrugs it off, looks in your direction, looks pretty unhappy. <laughs> Mac, you're next. Uh, which one did you just shoot at, Andis? Uh, this guy right here. Okay. Ah, oh, progging every time. Uh, the closest one to us, get him. <laughs> and I am going to oh, fire. No, you're just within 60 feet. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Uh, and uh, am I, do I take a penalty for shooting through Andis or because he's taking cover? Does that matter? Uh, since you are behind him, shooting through someone would be a small penalty. Uh, yeah, that is going to happen anyway. I'm going to quickly draw my azimuth laser pistol and fire. Nice. So 24 to hit. Nice. Nice, nice, nice. Are you... All right, five points of damage. Same one. Okay. These guys stalk forward. Uh, so when you say these guys are carrying long swords, are they, are they like archaic long swords? Or is it laser long swords? Like, I'm wondering if these guys are walking around with, like, ancient elven artifacts that are in there just like, no, yeah, that could probably cut something. They, they are not archaic weapons, not like ancient swords, but they are modern made a- analog long swords. So okay, okay, so analog. Kind of like okay. katanas. Really wicked looking blades, too. Um, so one of them moves up, the other kind of double move, get behind a trash can over here, and the the leader in the back steps forward and takes a look at the, the three of you huddled together. Uh, actually, no, I think that's take that back. One of these guys steps forward forward as far as he can and just lobs a grenade in your direction kick it all right 18 on the dice so it went right at your feet i need all three of you to make a reflex save Alrighty, so all right so it looks like everyone has made the save so it'll only be half damage it is uh a shock grenade explodes red feet and does three points of damage to everyone. Oh, phew. Oh, no, not bad. Good good dodging, everybody. Good dodging. And the leader in the back steps forward. Uh, they kind of look in your direction and is going to, I think, focus on one of you. Uh, Alindra, she looks at you, another Lashunton, as herself. I see maybe, I don't know, anger, jealousy, rage, all these things in, in her eyes. And all of a sudden, those things are blasted into your mind. It looks like she's giving you some kind of psychic attack. I need a willpower save. Alindra has great willpower. Okay, 14. Not going to be enough here. Does that calculate the ring of resistance that she got the last yeah, time? Yeah, that counted toward my reflex save, uh, not okay. my will. I'm rolling really low. So it's five points of uh, psychic damage. 
as she's just oh, yeah. uh, mentally barraging you. And that sorry, is... sorry, just just point of clarification, uh, uh, Rebecca, did you just say did you just say that that point that that went to your reflex, not your will? Yeah, because the ring of resistance only um, gives you a plus one to the one that you have the lowest reflex save or uh, the lowest saving throw on. So for me, it was. Reflex. Oh, is that how that works now? Yeah. Yeah. Oh. Uh... Okay. That's yeah, interesting. So that reflex was here. Reflex, but that's lowest. because it was my lowest one. Yeah, because my base on that is plus one, whereas for Fort and Will, it's three. Oh, um, I guess those are your, yeah. Reflex is your your weakest. So yeah. pretty pretty useful because you know grenades are going to be reflexes most of the time. Yeah, no, okay. I'm very thankful to have that. <laughs> that is their turn. Edros, give me a perception check. See if you hear this this uh, grenade that's gone off. It's going to be a little easier now. <laughs> Nom, 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 nom. Need a 15. Oh, Oh, yeah. Yes. You hear a scuffle out in the alleyway. Okay, I'm going to spend a standard action to eat all of my food very quickly and slug the beer. Make a fortitude save. Okay. Uh, Pop. I was just kidding. Uh, you you better not be doing that. <laughs> I'm t- totally. I gotta finish my food. Is it like when you go uh, swimming that you're not supposed to engage in combat until half an hour after you eat? Oh man, you have These to guys. wait at least six rounds. <laughs> you guys are taking this combat so lightly. I'm going to murder somebody <laughs> because of your your flippancy. Are you moving after that? Yes, uh, but I have a quick question. So you know how we left a bunch of our weapons in a car? Do I have those? Did it's we up. get them back? You took the car here, so it's up to you. Cool. Okay, I just wanted to make sure that it was the same car. Didn't clarify that. So I just wanted to make sure, otherwise I wouldn't have anything. The- okay, so I'm going toward Photon Attunement, and I am going to Stellar Rush at the person right in front of me um, and do a um, standard just solar weapon attack at the end of that. Gotcha. Does that work? Yep. And this is my first time uh, casting or using my solar weapon after getting my crystal. So I have a plus Ooh. 1d3 on top of it's the great. damage. That's awesome. It, it's worthless, though, if you miss, which you did. Oh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> oh Two on the dice. I'm excited. Two on Nine. the dice. Yeah. Uh, well, he that, definitely that dodges just, out of the way. Uh, it is back to the top of the order. Turn to Raimi. Your turn. Make perception check. See if you figure out now that Adros has run out of the room what is happening. There's a fight going on, sir. You can hear it. You see Adros run. All Thank right. You. So Raimi uh, downs the rest of his whiskey, sighs, and stands up, unslings his laser rifle, and starts walking towards the alleyway. Okay. I mean, you can, you know. I, mean, I don't know. I really don't understand why you guys are like doing this so flippantly, <laughs> but I'm going to make you pay for it. So you, yeah, you just move once. That's fine. Well, uh, I mean, that's this. all I can do. <laughs> you, oh no, you can run <laughs> like, in, in any emergency. You can run. <laughs> you can double move if you want. Silly, which is 60 feet, uh, which is what to right about right here. Let's go on to Andis 147. Your turn. Let's see here. I'm going to, I'm going to track the, this gentleman back here because this guy well so does this guy have cover against my attacks right now he is yes he's, he's kind of hiding behind uh, an air duct wait what he's st- just standing in the hallway no the, I'm asking because he's on the other side of Alindra oh the one that Alindra's fighting yes he will have cover Alindra's in the way alright well whatever uh, I'm going to take a tracking shot right yeah okay yeah no, I'll track and then fire at this gentleman right here. The one, the one Alindra is fighting, yes. Yep. There we go. That's a right. 20 versus EAC. Versus EAC, even with her providing cover, that is a hit. And that's some yes. max damage from me. That's 11 yeah, points baby. of damage. And 8 on the mm. dice. Uh, 11, yeah. Let me hear. Okay. After that, he takes a laser rifle straight to his dome. He falls down dead. Yes! Yeah. Hey! Well done. Ooh, gotcha. Oh, it takes, apparently. <laughs> uh, Neck, your turn. Uh, hmm. Let's see. I feel like I feel like we need to go after the, the, the boss lady over there. Get her. Okay, so tracking. Looks like a, a magic-using Lashantan woman in the back. And uh, do you have a standard action you want to do? Uh, yeah, I am also going to uh, shoot my azimuth laser pistol uh, for all of the good it's going to do. At the at her, I imagine. Right. That is a miss. I missed, yeah. And on their turn, um, Alindra, your target has 
disappeared. But you take a look down the adjoining alleyway. You see two more of these figures stalking oh, forward. On. Mm-hmm. With shotguns as well. And they get right up to here in front of you. And they level these blasters at you and both fire. Oh, no. Let's see here. Bring up this gun. Bring up the gun. Fair. Why me? I don't, I don't know why, but about half the party didn't come outside. I know. <laughs> if Andrus and Raimi get Alindra killed. Uh, no, this is Nack's fault. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't think we had anything to do with this. I'm going to hold my, my rage until after we're done recording. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So these two figures stock four. They pull these shotguns out. What is your KAC? Mine. Mm-hmm. Uh, Lindra? 14, I'm sorry. Okay, so one of them misses, and one of them hits five points of damage from that. This guy in the back here pulls out his longsword and, and rushes up to you to slash at you. A 19 on the dice, that is also a hit. Nine points of damage. Cuts a wide swath right through your armor. And on her turn, she sees you just getting ganged up on by her minions. And this lady, I think, yeah, I think uh, no matter what, it's gonna, you're going to have to make another willpower save. Go ahead and do that. Oh. Five on the dice. Ready. And she psychically assaults you again for 10 points of damage. Ooh. Bye, guys. Ooh. How, how are you doing? <laughs> it's oh, fun. How are you doing? I'm doing great. <laughs> Not great. Alrighty, and that is their turn in Adros. It is your turn. Sweet. I will. Well, I was thinking of throwing a grenade, but I think at this point we just need to give these bad guys somebody else to shoot at. So let's do a double move. Just move it. Double move. You've got, what, 70 feet? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I can pretty much I can get that. So now I'm in between the. Basically, I moved around a corner, down a hallway, and in between the two shotgunners who were trying to flank or who successfully kind of flanked Alindra. Right, right. Let's see. So they've, uh, at this point, uh, have dropped their shotguns. And they're looking to grab their swords. Alindra, your turn. <sighs> okay, I'm going another uh, point toward photon attunement. Turn to you. Do you have any healing serum? Yeah, is that going to provoke an attack of opportunity? Since Most. A person? Uh, I don't believe. Uh, casting a spell, shooting a gun. I always forget the third one. Uh, in exiting a threatened square. Right. So okay, you can so indeed I... stab yourself. That's your whole turn, though, taking it out and ministering it. So um, never, never uh, a wise choice. Battle. I don't like this. I really don't want Alindra to die, but... All right, I'm going to attack this person that's right in front of me. Yep. Yeah, just attack one of these minions. All righty. Eight on the dice. That is uh, 15 against... KAC, is that correct? Yeah. That is just a hit. Hey, Good. there you go. And I get an additional 1d3 on top of my 8. So that brings me to 11 damage. Yes. I th- think it's already in there because it says 2 plus 3 plus. No, that's her strength and her weapon specialization. Oh, right, right, yeah. right. So we're talking 11 damage? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Dang, dang, man. We haven't had a, a, a straight fight since you guys got to level three. That's a, that's a lot. I know. This is my yeah. first time actually being able to use my so- solar weapon crystal thing. So that's why I <laughs> nice. get a 1d3. Uh, Alrighty, turn three. We're back to Raimi. All right. So uh, Raimi sees uh, this guy hacking away on Alindra and casts magic missile. Pew, pew, oh. pew, pew. Three bolts of energy. Whoosh. Emit from your fingertips. Knock into this guy. Go ahead and roll those d4s. Sweet, sweet d4s. And he didn't move, so he gets three uh, d4s, right? All right, so Ooh. that's uh, five, five, and four. So 14. Oh, boy, Jeez. so much damage. Your energy bolts just rip into this guy, pummeling his face into a bloody mess. He goes down. He's dead. hey well, Done, Raimi. Second in the turn order is Andis. Uh, let's see. Now I'm going to use a move action to place some cover kind of right in front. Yeah, kind of kind of right here. So we can still kind of get... Yeah. So we can still... Hang on a second. You can just like knock over one of the barrels that's in the, the square in front of you and into making a little barricade. Okay, yeah. Okay, yeah. That's kind of what I want to do. Yeah. Um, and then 
I am going to... I guess right now the only person I have an unobstructed shot at is the is boss lady. Mm -hmm. She's so, also still got get him on her right now. Okay. Ah, oh, crap. I'm not targeting her. Um. Yeah, well, we'll 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 see how it goes. Always roll a twenty. I mean, that would be very useful at this point. I agree. <laughs> ah, close That's enough. That's a nineteen <laughs> versus the AC. Okay, with the negatives for shooting through some folk. Uh, that is versus EAC. Also a hit. Yes. All right. Nice. That's, that'll be five points of damage. Even with the negative four. All right. So see her look down at the wound and that, you know, like it's it's on her arm and she just kind of like licks the burn mark there. She All crazy. right. <laughs> All right. It's a totally she natural crazy. reaction. And Nack, it's your turn. She's hurting. Get her. Keeping it up on the boss. Yes. Alindra, be shouting orders. Alindra, stay in the fight. You just got all that cool crap. Inspiring boost. Boop what does that give me? Plus seven. Seven stamina back. Sweet. Thanks. Did that go up when you went up in level? Is it more than seven there? Uh, I don't believe so. I think it. What, will... what is it? Oh yeah, it's based on what your charisma and your level. I think it's just a flat amount, and then I can get upgrades to it with impro and envoy improvisations later. Double check that though. Yeah, I'm pretty sure it, it's uh, uh, your envoy level to plus your charisma modifier. So, oh no, twice your envoy level and your charisma modifier. What's your charisma modifier? Three. And so yeah, that that should be a nine. Oh, okay. I will fix my. Uh, yeah, that's cool. Fix my macro. You get that, uh, Rebecca. Oh, sweet. Yeah, that's why it's a pretty great ability because it just scales quite well since it's double. Awesome. So that is your turn, their turn. You can make an attack of opportunity against one of them at Dross because uh, these guys both take out their long swords that you've run up to. Oh, I'm so excited for this battle. I will whip my flame doshko around all twirly burly and try and hit one. Oh, that's a 21 against EAC. That is a hit. That's 15 points of damage. Oh, oh Lord. Oh, oh, oh. Dang. And it hurts. It hurts so much. Uh, you, yeah, you hit this one. He steps forward looking to get to Alindra, and this other one stays on you. What is your KAC? It doesn't matter. I rolled a one. Oh, <laughs> uh, but but it's interesting. It's interesting you ask because I did get some bling bling new armor. So my new KAC is actually 22. Alindra, what is your KAC? 14. You. Boo, boo, boo. But, uh, hey, I rolled a 14 on dice. So that's definitely a hit. Oh, no. Yeah. Hey. That uh, one on the damage dice. So five, five points of damage this one slashes at you and the i think the boss is gonna switch things up a bit go ahead and give me a will save alindra oh. come on you gotta pass this one yes! yes there we are so yeah she did seem uh you got an 18 on the dice 20 she seemed to be invading your mind again and instead of all those other emotions which she was sending at you was just waves and waves of fear and you just shake it off is it my turn? Oh, I'm sorry. It does. It does affect you. You are not frightened. You're not shaking in fear, but you are just shaken for the the remainder of the. So it's oh no. Negative two penalty to uh, some things. Ability checks, attack rolls, saving throws, yeah. and skill checks. But that is their entire turn, and that takes us to Adros. Edris is going to pivot around with this uh, Lushunton. These are Lushuntons, right? Yeah. Uh, it looks like it. These Lush that guy who tried to get past me to go to Alindra, and I'm just going to say, Bad Lushunton, no cookie. And I'm going to attack him twice. <laughs> first <laughs> okay. <at> what? <laughs> first first yeah. attack. Uh, hey, 25. Against That's a hit. 11 points of damage. Uh, he did. Oh, um, I'll, I'll pivot around and go after the last one with the second attack then. Ooh, ooh, 13 against EAC? That's a miss. Oh. Ah, dang it. So close. Okay. So close. So close. Alindra. All right, now it's my turn, right? You are, yes, shaken, Guess not what? afraid. I am fully photon attuned. Mm hmm. So yeah, I'm going to move over to the boss and supernova. All right, moving right up to her. It's exciting. <laughs> so, what we got on the damage here? 
Uh, you've what rolled a five, but you add plus one to that, correct? No, it's two d six. Yeah, she rolled two one. ones. Oh okay. gosh, I saw the essay. <laughs> yeah, okay, I'm sorry, I, I was looking at the, the wrong thing in rule twenty. Yeah, so it's two damage. ones for damage. Get a, they get a reflex save. Natural twenty oh, on her reflex save. <laughs> so Ooh, you make you bathe her in in this <laughs> this fiery uh, corona around your body, and she just seems to shake it off. And uh, she looks at you, and a very wide smile crosses her face. And it gets insanely wide. The smile kind of bifurcates her head and it opens up into a massive jaw of uh, uh, hundreds of of sharp teeth. Uh, Definitely, yeah, like a grotesque monster. And that's the end of that turn. Turn four, (laughs) Raimi. Oh, that sounded very pleasant. Can we kill her? (laughs) <laughs> please, please so, do. So Raimi is uh, going to saddle up his uh, his laser rifle and takes aim at the <laughs> wide open mouth. Yeah, you're, you're <laughs> just, uh, pretty just... far away. You shoot through someone, but give us give us a roll. Dead eye her. Go for it. 15. That is a miss. Well, you hit the, the, the wall of the alley right behind her. Andis, can you do it? I can try. Spend a move action to track. All right. And all right, get him is still up as well. I'm blowing on my fingers. Uh, all right, here we are. Still a move. Oh, oh no. no. Where are you going to uh, be when the Azure one comes? I was here about to kill Alindra. Knack, your turn. All right, once again, get him. All right. And both. As a swift action, I'd like to pull out my semi auto pistol from a cheek pouch. Okay, spitting that out. And I'm going to use that instead. Twang. And all I'm right. gonna miss and hit a wall and all of that. Bullet ricochets down the alleyway. And that takes us to the enemy's turn. This one takes a look at you, Edros, licks his blade, and makes one giant attack against you. Oh boy. Oh boy. 22, you said? Yep. <laughs> that. Oh, I've rolled a 12. That is a miss. Ooh, he, he, he rakes it across your chest. It does not penetrate. It doesn't get through your armor. Woohoo. Yeah, no, they got a good bonus, too. <laughs> this one takes a look at you, Alindra. And let's see. Mm-mm-mm. Yeah, so her mouth has expanded to about twice its normal size. Head is just kind of like, you know, falling backward. And it's filled with razor sharp teeth. And she comes in and starts biting at you. Uh, what's your KAC? Um, All right. So sh- I've rolled a 15, 16. Those are both hits. Uh, she's done two attacks. Oh, All right, max damage oh, on both. No. God. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yay for me, yay for Patrick. So that is 16 points of damage. No. As she just tears into your neck, pulling the flesh out, supping, supping on your fine uh, neck meat. <laughs> you, still, <laughs> neck meat. you still live in Alindra? Barely. I mean, Already. Barely. Edros, your turn. I... Uh, uh... I can't see them, can I? I can't see a lender take that hit. Uh, nope, you're you're fighting a guy that's right in front of you down the other alley. Uh, crap. I don't know. Yeah, he doesn't know. Um, two attacks. <clears throat> unless this guy goes down in one, and then I'll move. Nope, you have to say it first. Because uh, it, it affects your, oh, your dice roll. So if you want to do one attack, you can. If you want to do two attacks, you can. But you got to say it. That's, uh, that's true. I'll just do the two attacks. Yeah. Two attacks. Full attacking. Oh, Ooh. that's a Oh boy! Three Second the attack. No, it's probably it. That's a hit. Nice. Yeah, that is a uh, hit, and yeah, he's not doing too well. Only minimum damage. Ten damage. Ooh boy, minimum. <laughs> minimum is ten. Holy, holy, holy crap! <laughs> uh, okay, so that is your turn, Alindra. Your turn. I, I'm gonna have to run away. <laughs> okay, you can uh, even withdraw. I'm running as far as I can. And can I now, well, I guess I can't pull out. Can I pull out my healing serum as running? If you want to withdraw, you can't do anything else this turn. All right. I'll just with them. Okay. And that takes us to turn five. The top of turn five is a Raimi. All right. So I'm going to step in front of Alindra and then take another shot my laser rifle. All right. Nothing obstructing your view now. 24. That's a hit. Eight. Ooh. Seven points of damage. Incorrect, sir. You are forgetting your level three bonuses. Oh, maybe I am. 
<laughs> I believe you took the weapon specialization for, for your did. laser rifle. So you add your level to damage as well. Oh, okay. <laughs> uh, so that's 10 points of damage. 10 points! Uh, she's not looking so well. She takes that laser blast straight to her gut. Giant kind of puffed out belly. Zim for a mouth. <laughs> well, <laughs> maybe you roll natural 20. We'll, we'll get to you can shoot whatever you want. And it's 147, your turn. All right. The way is clear. There's She uh, has no cover, so I'm going to take two shots. All righty. Two shots. Pew, pew. There's one. There's the other. 20 and a 25. Yeah, minus baby. Minus four. So, whoop, whoop, so whoop. Wait, 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 sorry. Minus four. So 16 and a 21. Both uh, hits, seven, baby. 17. All right. That's, 17. Uh, that's 20 points of damage altogether. Hey, oh, she goes Woo. down. Boom. Yeah. Jabert coming in huge. Damn. Pow, pow. That's all it Why takes. Why didn't you do that last round? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah Jabert. <laughs> I don't know, Elytra. Why don't you get the hell out of my shot? <laughs> <laughs> And nobody wants to use this perfectly good, uh, this perfectly good cover I created. I, I wasn't even gonna say anything. What am I, chopped liver? And this is like, hey, Neck, I put up this cover for you so that you can conveniently yeah. use it. And Neck is like, nah, you're you're enough cover for me. <laughs> I'll just stand behind, behind you. And Neck. Like, oh man, this cover's so that. good for me to do three damage to the enemy. <laughs> All right, we're not we're, we're not fair. out of the woods. We're not out of the woods oh, yet. Nag, okay. it's your turn, and there's still an enemy. Oh. All right, I'm oh. going to. Oh, he, he's <laughs> gonna. Don't worry about him. I'm gonna Don't move. Worry. I'm gonna look. Oh, Edris, you're fighting people down there. Get him. Booyah! Oh, thanks, buddy. And this guy's gonna attack you, Edros. Oh, 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 no. Oh, no. oh no! Oh no! Twenty. I shouldn't have had that beer. the dice. I, I probably should have mentioned, but these were both uh, double attack. 17 Ooh. on the second one. Oh, Ooh. man. Ooh, that things that got one, a little, one, it's got a little spicy here. Minus four on that. It's only a 13, really. Minus four. Nope, that's a hit. <laughs> They're both hits. Ah. All right, let's yeah. roll a bunch of D8s. One. Not going to matter. Two. Not going to matter. Seven, two. No. You have to do better. Okay, so I've, I've rolled 10 points. So that uh, from these two sword cuts, as you're maybe momentarily distracted, is 22 points of damage. Yeah, still not even all the way through my stamina. Uh, you have to do better. Cuts right, right down into your armor and a massive spurt of Vesk blood uh, bathes this guy in front of you. You take one point of bleed damage as well. Aw, that's cute. Oh, it's your turn. <laughs> yep. Oh, let me reply in kind with one big attack. I'm want full bonus here. Babbing it up. Uh, 17 EAC. 18. Ooh, yeah. 18. That's a hit. That's a hit. Again, minimum damage. 10. Dang, come on. Oh, he gets. He's gonna. He's gonna have some more time. Uh, Alindra, I imagine you're healing up. Yeah, I need to do something. <laughs> Ramy, your turn. You don't, you don't see this fight. It's down this next alleyway, but you can you can hear a draw fighting. All right. So fire with my laser rifle. You can shoot right around the corner there. Great cover. 17. That is, that is a hit. Nice. Well mm. done, Raimi. Hitting, hitting some people. Mm-hmm. And stealing this kill because <laughs> you blast him with your seven, laser rifle. Seven points of damage. And he goes down. Nice. Blah. Uh, Mighty uh, fight shooting. We're out of combat. Oh, Ooh. man. And uh, if uh, nobody minds, I'm going to... Search this lady's body and take her coat because it looks awesome. Yeah, she's she's a pretty pretty big big woman and she has a very large leather coat on. What, what's Bloody everyone? You're wearing. And uh, this is gonna go check on Linda's wounds. Go for it, go for it. Yeah, um, you've healed up what a full eight, uh, Alindra? You you got the max amount on that healing. Yes. Mm -hmm. Why don't you guys give me a perception check real quick? See what you see on these guys. Oh, good. Uh, was that a was that a natural twenty? A natural twenty from Nack, a natural Andis. Yeah, I don't think this is something that uh, you might have noticed before. But Nack, maybe as you're looking over these dead bodies, why don't you give me a culture check? Uh, that's a ten. I don't know if I have time to take twenty. We already rolled it. You're not really sure. <laughs> it's a thirteen with the expertise. You but do notice they all. If, uh, I mean, they have these pretty wicked 
looking, you know, cuts, burns, scrapes all over their body. But there's a, a few parts of them that are unmarred, the, the nape of the neck, you know, kind of close to the chest. And they all have the same tattoo, this little red and black um, circle. Yeah, no, you're not, not sure what this tattoo is all about. Patrick, can I use my profession piracy to maybe identify it? No. Damn it. They're, they're not pirates. Not everyone's pirates, Tyler. Come on. Hey, I don't know. All right, we're going to make a note of this crazy tattoo because this seems to be some sort of maybe cult with when we got uh, people uh, turning into teethy mouth uh, creatures in the middle of Yeah, combat. what the heck was that? I don't know. I'm looking at her body. It's really weird. <laughs> if, any, still alive? if anyone has a mysticism check, go ahead and roll for me now. We can, we can tell you exactly if you know think, what it is. I think Miles has mysticism. I uh, do have Miles is the only one with mysticism. <laughs> Miles ain't got Jack. Ramy's got mysticism. Oh, right, right, right. Oh, as yeah, a yeah. skill. No, I think I think Miles has six, uh, fourteen. It was definitely some kind of magic, uh, maybe some kind of mystical magic outside of your purview. But you're not exactly sure what branch. You know, it it was it was some jacked up stuff. <laughs> All right, can I roll with Miles? No. <laughs> <laughs> Patrick, quick question. The dude who got his arm shot through at the beginning of the fight, is he dead or is he just injured? No. So if you check him, his arm is basically gone, burnt to the bone. And there's just like a nub there and up in through his shoulder. It's badly marred and burnt. He you know, just kind of sits up in shock. Is like, I, I thought those were my men. They, they obviously weren't. Oh, boy. What? What happened to my arm? Maybe it's time you answer some questions. Uh, That's a 25 on an intimidate check. Ooh. <laughs> ooh, boy. <laughs> Just like from a, from a four foot hamster. <laughs> I'm, yeah, a, I'm, a, <laughs> I'm a rat, you progger. <laughs> Nuggums is mad. <laughs> what, what do you want to know? Just, uh, oh, uh, does anyone have a, a serum? Oh um, gosh! Andis is going to start attending to tending to his wounds. Uh, and start uh, 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 not so fast. <laughs> oh no! No, watch this. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh god, he's dead! <laughs> oh boy, natural one on that medicine check. So you can you can start doing it, but yeah, you've not seen a wound like this. It's pretty rough. You're like you know bandaging up like burnt sagging flesh <laughs> like like my med kit is like full of like like band-aid brand band-aids <laughs> and i'm just like trying to stick those on there it's not even it's silly so string right i need the advanced kit no. it's still good it's still good okay let's get back to knack what do you want to ask knack who do you work for i i'm an independent contractor we, we smuggle stuff in in and out of the ukulam where's the professor oh. what what Paqual? Him too, but the other one, the picture that we showed you, whose name I don't oh. remember. Solstarni. <laughs> Solstarni. Where's Solstarni? The Kasathan. Yeah, no, I, I helped this guy rub Paqual, uh in a in a big old party of his uh, smuggle into uh, Turlahau Point. Got paid well, but yeah, something felt off about it. You know, they they seemed like soldiers, like these guys, and uh, pretty sure Paqual was a fake identity. But we we don't ask a lot of questions. Is Sostarni alive? Yeah, no, I, I saw a Kasathan with them. Uh, that, that's what uh, tipped me off. You guys were on the case. She she seemed out of it, though. Professor was the only one that, that had a legit travel permit. But uh, yeah, she seemed under duress. They, they moved a lot of stuff. There was, there was almost 20 of them. Lots of gear, comm units, tents, guns, explosives. Any names? You got names? Any other names? No, that's it. Where were they going? Ukulam. Tur halau point. Ugh. It's it's around then that you hear the sirens of the the Copper Rock Port Authority, you know, closing off the the alleyways, and uh, a number of uniformed detectives and Detective Laszlo, uh, you know, come running down the the alleyway and uh, you know with his gun drawn. He's like, "What what the hell happened here? There is a fight. They lost. Jeez, Louise. Well, hey, Laszlo, we got a really injured uh, teammate." Do you have a medical staff that could see to her? Yeah, and it, it's not a few minutes later before the EMC, the uh, Emergency Medical Corps, arrives. Just a, a ton of Lashunton uh, doctors and, and things of that nature. And they can they can start to tend to your wounds then. But uh, yeah, they they lock down the the alley and they so the EMCs they they see to Alindra, but they also see to 
this Lashuntin who identifies himself as Twonus in, and uh, yeah, his his armor has just been destroyed, uh-huh. and the uh, the detective you know talks to him, the uh, asks him a lot of the same questions that you asked Mac, and yeah, the police close off the scene, and uh, Lazlo says, "Well, we'll take it from here. Need to get stuff into to evidence, but oh boy, don't don't know what we stumbled ourselves into here." This guy, I know him, he's a runner. Been trying to track him down for some time. Said he took the good doctor on a trip to Ukulam. You know anything about why they might be heading out there? Maybe, but uh, we might keep that to ourselves for Starfinder business, if you understand what we mean. I mean, uh, the only thing I'm concerned about is getting Dr. Solstarny back. If uh, if keeping me in the dark you think is going to help save her, then you have to do what you have to do, Soki. Just keep this cat alive, because he might have some more information that we all need. I don't know if our comm units will get back to you if we need to if we need to, to contact you while we're on Yucalam, but if they reach, we'd love to keep you in the loop and see if we can get any information. What you're you're going to Yucalam? Where else do you think we're gonna find the Solstarni? <sighs> well, that's uh that's a bit out above my pay grade. I'm- Outside of our jurisdiction. Godspeed to you, Starfinder. Since when do cops care about jurisdiction? <laughs> oh, yeah. In, in some another- reference to the Dark Knight here about, like, uh, about yeah. being a vigilante. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, it's a whole other continent. You know, it's like, it's, saying, yeah. it's like, oh, we're just going to go to Russia and arrest the bad Hey, guys. Batman went to China. Yeah. yeah this, guy, this guy's not Batman. His name... Not with that attitude. I don't know if you, you gather this, <laughs> but this is a, a Patrick NPC uh, detective Laszlo laser. This is this is this is one of one of those Patrick originals, Jim Gordon. <laughs> <laughs> You're a loose cannon, Andis. <laughs> so after about twenty minutes, you guys resting. If you want to get back your stamina, you can. The port authority is taping off the crime scene, and they're they're still treating your wounds. A car arrives, and Waylos and Master Muhali uh, get out of it. Uh, she speaks a while with Detective Laszlo, and then and then comes up to you all and says, oh, I've, I've been informed of what happened. Is, is it true? I mean, yeah. They, they, <laughs> yeah whoa, whoa, whoa. You might need to be a little more specific. <laughs> yeah. Dr. Sostarni has been taken. They abducted her and took her to the, uh, the dark continent of Yucalam. That seems yeah. to be the case. We, uh... Got to do some digging. Got to do a little uh, traveling to to make sure. Well, you're in for a bit of luck, uh, along with the Port Authority here, and I, I we've spoken with the Dean of the School of Xenoarchaeology, and I was able to secure your all five Yucalam passports. That's fantastic, but we may need a little more than just passports. We might need medical supplies, antivenoms, serums of healing, med patches, things like that. What can you do for us in that department? I mean, if you if you're going to Yucalim, truly, uh, you're going to need a whole lot more than that. I've uh, arranged for you the, an expedition stipend uh, from from the university. It's it's a paltry sum, but enough to hopefully supply you with what you need. Uh, I've also made uh, arrangements for someone to meet you in Turhala Point. It's it's this old decommissioned military base on Yucalim they use as a staging area. And as I said, we'll have someone there to meet you with many supplies that you need, the food and and, and things you'll want for your, your journey into the forest. Thank you, Professor. Just, I, you know, if you are still interested in tracking down where this alien language came from, this is great, but, well, we, we just want you to go after and, and find Dr. Solstarni. To see her safely return to university, we, you know, would offer the Starfinder Society any and all research, resources you need to decipher the language. So Starney will definitely be our main priority. Laszlo comes up to you and says, uh, well, you'd be awful helpful in this. It's, like I said, outside my jurisdiction, but with those visas, the master's got you. Well, we can fast track and get you uh, out of here today so you can start tracking those bastards down. We'll sub- we'll gear up. Uh, we'll spend a little bit of time gearing up, and then we'll ship out. Yeah, and uh, you can take most of the, the weapons, and you find some creds on... Uh, the, these people that attacked you as well and get you the gear outside of the game. But the stipend that Master Mahali sends you is 2,500 credits. Yay! To split amongst you. And uh, you guys can you know have some time to, to make some purchases in the next few hours. But they do fast track you to, to get to a uh, Ayudara, one of these elfin gates. And that's where we find ourselves. It's these massive stone archways that are, are spread across Castravel. 
and uh, you, you saw them, I think, in the last episode. They're used as portals, you know, travel portals to instantaneously transport goods and people across the planet. You're in a port authority controlled facility uh, that's, you know, like official government purposes. And one of these massive portal lies directly ahead of you. And it's not currently active, but the, the ground here still hums with this powerful ancient magic kind of resonance, you know, and if you guys have like fillings in your teeth, you can feel like a slight tug on them. The hairs on the back of your neck stand up just standing in front of this thing. You all are, are ushered towards the back of the building with Master Mahali and all your papers are verified and you're each separated and given a, a brief interrogation by a Lashunton woman who uh, introduces herself as gate controller Rayiri before you're led to a final decontamination area. And then you're you're prepped for your journey, you know, given given your weapons and things like that. Master Mahali says, I've I've made contact with a research fellow on Yucalan. Uh, he goes by the name Dr. Kair Al Nuaf. He'll he'll greet you on the other side. We've we've arranged vehicle transport for you uh, for a few miles inland, but after that they don't allow any sort of transportation. So you're gonna have to track them overland from there. Behind you, the portal erupts with a blue swirling energy. Looks like a vortex in in an ocean of pure blue with swirls of purple and black lights. The, the sound is that of the air being sucked out of the room through a keyhole, but thousands times louder. Master Mahali uh, shouts to you now as you head towards it. Uh, Dr. Sostani's captors have a 40-hour head start, but if you're quick about it, and if you think you're following along the path of Halkuim Zon, you can catch up with them. Good luck, Starfinders. Anybody got any last words to the good doctor here? Maybe just gives a thumbs up. Steps through the portal. Yep. And it steps through. Blip Hardcastle gives a little, gives a little salute. Goes on. Uh, Edros says, "You're about to go through." She says, "Oh, and one more thing, I forgot to tell you. Mm-hmm. To be continued." Yeah, I was waiting to for that. Be <laughs> continued next week in Yucalam. Well, I was gonna bring you back a souvenir, but now I don't think I will. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we're we're out of the game. You don't have to talk like that, Tyler. You guys have solved some mysteries. Still got some other ones laying ahead of you. Survived. Kendra almost died. Nah, you're fine. You're fine. <laughs> I was down to two hit points. I, well, I love how you were like, oh, I'm really injured. So I'm going to go right up next to the boss. <laughs> well, <laughs> I, I was, I I was like, oh, that. that's so. I mean, yeah. it was one of the, it was, I would, I, if, if I were you in that situation. You would have been a little baby and ran out of the room and healed yourself uh, uh, like you did in the fight in the Fusion Queen. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's absolutely, that's absolutely what I would have done. Mm-hmm. I, I would have done. We're going to have a lot of hard fights ahead of us on the uh, continent of Yucalam. Cannot wait for next week. I think. Oh, okay, so that's episode 21. We're going to have some more action, some jungle mm-hmm. crawling fun next week. Thank you guys for playing with me. Thank yeah. you Absolutely. for GMing. Everyone have a great night. You too, buddy. Bye-bye. Angle, angle.